Shanta Raja Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Jayamad Yasya Nath. Ita yato niviyat itaratas cha te suavigya swarat Janmad yasa yatam vayar itaratas cha te suavigya swarat Tene brahma hirdaya adhikavaye muyanti atsura yaha Tene brahma hirdaya adhikavaye muyanti atsura yaha Tejo varimidam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha Tejo varimidam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dimahi Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute and truth. The, and the primal cause of all causes. And the primal cause of all causes. Uh, of the creation, maintenance, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute Dharma truth. Kaitra Vutra. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Vutra. Paramo Nirmatsara Nam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsara Nam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapatrayon Muranam. Shivadam Tapatrayon Muranam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamani Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamani Krite. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Sadhya Vridi Avaruddhite Tra. Sadhya Vridi Avaruddhite Tra. Krite Bhis Susubhis Takshana. Krite Bhis Susubhis Takshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the high truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth that the reality is distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapaturur galitam phalam. Nigama kapaturur galitam phalam. Sukhamukhad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukhamukhad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. 
O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shemar Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire trees of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although it nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls. Shrimvatam swakata Krishna. Shrimvatam swakata Krishna. Punya shravana kirtana. Punya shravana kirtanam. Hridyantastohi abhadrani. Hridyantastohi abhadrani. Vidhu noti surit satam. Vidhu noti surit satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. It is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who continually engages in hearing of him. And purifies the body who is continually hearing of him. Nasta preesu badreesu. Nasta preesu badreesu. Nityam Bhagavata sevaya. Nityam Bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati nastiki. Bhakti bhavati nastiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his, his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayas chaye. Kamaloba dayas chaye. Chaitai tayar navidam. Chaitai tayar navidam. Sitam sadve prasiriti. Sitam sadve prasiriti. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion of ignorance, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga ta. Bhagavat. Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these impurities are wiped away When these impurities are wiped away The candidate remains steady in his position in his position of pure goodness The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness Becomes enlivened by devotional service Becomes enlivened by devotional service And understands the science of God perfectly and understands the signs of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Rudyate vidyate grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Shiyante chasya karmani. Shiyante chasya karmani. Drista evatmanishwari. Drista evatmanishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus the bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagran and enables one to come at once to the stage of Asamsha Samagrama. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16. Hmm. We're on 18, uh, verse number 18. Is that right? Yeah. 19. Huh? 19. 19. 19. Okay. Dharma. Uvacha, Dharma Uvacha, Kashchit Badre Namayam Atmanaste, Kashchit Badre Namayam Atmanaste, Vichaya Sim Malaya Yatisan Mukena, Vichaya Sim Malaya Tin Mukena, Alakshaye Bavatim. Antaradim, Alakjay Bhavatim Antaradi, Dure Bandum So Chasi Kanchanamba, Dure Bandum So Chasi Kanchanamba. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. 
Dharma, in the form of a bull, asked, Madam, are you not hale and hearty? Why are you covered with the shadow of grief? It appears by your face that you have become black. Are you suffering from some internal disease or are you thinking of some relative who is away in a distant place? Purported by Srila Prabhupada. The people of the world in this age of Kali are always full of anxieties. Everyone is diseased with some kind of ailment. From the very faces of the people of this age, one can find out the index of the mind. Everyone feels the absence of his relative who is away from home. The particular symptom of the age of Kali is that no family is now blessed to live together. To earn a livelihood, the father lives at a place far away from the son, or the wife lives far away from the husband, and so on. There are sufferings from internal diseases, separation from those near and dear, and anxieties for maintaining the status quo. These are but important factors which make the people of this age always unhappy. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is a very elusive thing, uh, material happiness. One can be very, very happy in one moment and devastated the next moment. I was reading about a uh, some history uh, and there was a big wedding procession and at the same time there was a riot and the rioters killed the husband, the newlywed husband and wife and the wedding party, massacred them. So you can see, going from extreme happiness to extreme misery in a matter of a few minutes. So that's why I say that material happiness in the material world is, el is very elusive because one could go in a matter of seconds or minutes from extreme happiness to extreme misery. How many times have you read in the newspaper that someone is taking a selfie and they're on a, a precipice, uh, like in the, in the uh, uh, let's say in Colorado, in the, in the Grand Canyon, and they're taking a picture like this and they fall over and die. Uh, have you read things like that? Yeah, it happens very often. And the, the picture they took right before they fell over, they, they were smiling, they're happy, right? And then it turned into a terrible tragedy. So this is happening all the time in the material world. And therefore, padam padam yet vi padam nate sam. There's danger in every step. And that's a fact of, of life. And we should realize that at any moment, some crazy thing can happen and completely ruin our, our life. Therefore, being Krishna conscious is very important because uh, we should always have the name of Krishna on our lips and our thoughts. Tasmat sarve sukhali su mam anusmara yudhicha mayarpatamano buddhir mam ivaisisya samsaya Therefore, O Arjuna, at every moment, do your do think of me and do your duty. With your mind and intelligence fixed on me, surely you will come back to me. So that is the whole point. So our mind and intelligence fixed on Krishna. Abhyasa yogi yuktena chetasa nanyagamina purusham paramam purusham divyam yati partana chintayan. He who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remember, remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. And in the purport of this verse, Krishna says, in this verse, Lord Krishna stresses the importance of remembering him. One's memory of Krishna is revived by chanting the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So if you want to improve your memory, chant Hare Krishna. By this practice of chanting and hearing the sound vibration of the Supreme Lord, one's ear, tongue, and mind are engaged. So you see, chanting at least loud enough that you can hear it is very important. And if you're really merciful, you'll chant loud enough that the person next to you can hear you. That's even more merciful. Not only you can hear, but the person next to you can also hear. You can also chant silently, but uh, it's m more preferable to chant in such a way that you, get, you, you create a closed circuit between the vibration coming from your tongue and lips to your ears and going into the mind. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Those who chant silently all the time, well, they got a chance. Uh, you, oftentimes the mind will wander here and there. But if you chant loud enough at least that you can hear it, uh, you, it, it engages not only the lips and the tongue, but it engages the ears and the <coughs> mind. And if you feel you, your mind is deviating, you can increase the volume of the chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And the speed also. See? So if you're going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Uh, no, it's, it's better to, if you feel you're going to sleep or your, your mind is one, you chant louder and then uh, bring your mind back. Okay, so then it says, by this pra practice of chanting and hearing the sound vibration of the Supreme Lord, one's ear, tongue, and mind are engaged. This mystic meditation is very easy to practice, and it helps one attain the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada calls it mystic meditation. Why the word mystic? Because there's very special thing happening. There's a direct connection through the name of Krishna to Krishna himself, who is non-different than his name, his pastimes, his paraphernalia, etc. That's what it means, the supreme absolute truth. Absolute means there's no difference between his body and his soul. There's no difference between his name and himself. There's no difference between his pastimes and himself. There's no difference between his holy dom and his self. That's what absolute means, right? Purusham, purusham means enjoyer. Although living entities belong to the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord, they are in material contamination. They think themselves enjoyers, but they are not the supreme enjoyer. Here, it is clearly stated that the supreme enjoyer is the supreme personality of Godhead in his different manifestations and plenary expansions as Narayan, Vasudeva, etc. The devotee can constantly think of the object of worship, the Supreme Lord, in any of his features, Narayana, Krishna, Rama, etc., by chanting Hare Krishna. This practice will purify him, and at the end of his life, due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. Yoga practice is meditation on the super soul within. Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, one fixes his mind always on the Supreme Lord. So the yogis, they're meditating, or they should be meditating, not on the uh, this vast uh, expanse, expanse of the mystic oneness. That, that will get you nowhere. But they meditate, they should be meditating on Krishna within as Paramatma. And that's the whole point of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Uh, it's to understand and actually see Paramatma in the heart. So the devotee meditates on Krishna uh, in his uh, beautiful form as a young cowherd boy or as uh, a young, beautiful king of uh, uh, Dwarka, like that, or as Arjuna's best friend driving his chariot as Partha Sarati. He always meditates on Krishna in his Shamsundra form, the three-bending form, holding the flute, etc. 
So the, con the devotee can constantly, or you can meditate on Lord Rama, or you can meditate on Narayana. Later on, however, in the Bhagavad Gita, 1865, Prabhupada says in the purport, says, one should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he is all attractive. One who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super soul feature, etc. But one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one who is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself, is the most perfect transcendentalists. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge and this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Karma Yoga, empiric philosophers, mystics, and devotees are all called transcendentalists, but one who is a pure devotee is the best of all. The particular words used here, ma sucha, don't fear, don't hesitate, don't worry, are very significant. One may be perplexed as to how one can give up all kinds of religious forms and simply surrender unto Krishna, but such worry is useless. Haripo. So we see Prabhupada gives special emphasis, and so does the Shastra, of meditating on the original form of Krishna as Sham Sundar, holding the flute with the enchanting smile and the, uh, the peacock feather and so forth. So therefore it says, the devotee can constantly think of the object of worship, the Supreme Lord in any of his features, Narayana, Krishna, Rama, etc., by chanting Hare Krishna. This practice will purify him and at the end of his life due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. In this respect, uh, Prabhupada also said when he was in uh, uh, Hyderabad, uh, we, we, had, we had received some kind of a donation of 600 acres of land outside of Hyderabad. And when he was speaking, I think, to Mahamsa Swami, who was a Parsi who became a devotee and disciple of Prabhupada, he said, I think Mahamsa told him that, uh, you know, most of the people in South India, they, they worship different forms of Vishnu, like Balaji or, or uh, Varadaraj or uh, uh, Shri, uh, um, Shri Rangam, they worship uh, Ranganath and other place they worship uh, Padmanabham and so forth. These are all Vishnu forms. And Prabhupada said, yeah, that's okay. He said, we can open Vishnu temples just as long as they chant Hare Krishna and take Mahaprasada. <laughs> so he, sa he said, because they're used to worshiping Vishnu, Vishnu, that's a form of Krishna, that's okay. He said, just as long as they chant Hare Krishna and they take Prasada. And when I read that, then I realized it's possible also to, to uh, open a Vishnu temple, right? If that's, the tr if that's the tradition of people in a certain area, as long as they chant Hare Krishna and they take Mahaprasada, right? So this practice will purify him and at the end of his life, due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. Well, yeah, the kingdom of God not only has Goloka Vrindavan, also has Vaikuntha, right? Yoga practice is meditation on the super soul within. Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, one fixes his mind always on the Supreme Lord. The mind is fickle, and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. Well, what is that force? The force is as soon as you feel your mind is wandering into La La Land, you chant Hare Krishna out loud. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. Bring it back to Krishna Land, 
You don't want to be in La La Land. You want to be in Krishna Land. The mind is fickle, and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. One example often given is that of the caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly, and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives, we shall have the same bodily constitution as Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha. So, here is the formula to attain your real transcendental body and go back to Godhead. This Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is very special. It's so special, sometimes people take it for granted because, they're, oh, it's too easy chanting Hare Krishna. Give me something harder, like twisting my body into a pretzel. That's a bunch of nonsense. Chanting Hare Krishna purely is hard, right? but it's easy if you have no material desires. It's hard if you have plenty of material desires. But if you keep chanting one by one, just like if you peel an onion, uh, one by one the skins come off of the onion and finally it's all peeled. So in the same way, you keep peeling away different layers of maya in the mind and, and, uh, and due to our karma. And eventually you come to this, if you peel the onion, you end up with nothing, right? But with uh, peeling away the maya, you end up with satchitananda, your real uh, spiritual body full of bliss, eternity, and knowledge. There's no, if you peel away the body, the material body, you'll end up with your spiritual body because the material body is built on the basis of your spiritual body. Um, unfortunately, due to false ego, it, it, it becomes a body, a material body, but it takes the form of your false ego and false desires from previous life. But that can be peeled away, and then you'll see your real spiritual body right? and your spiritual relationship with Krishna. So this constant meditating on the Lord, and is made easy by Lord Chaitanya. He said, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. So if you get into the habit of always thinking of Krishna with this, the easy method of chanting the holy name of the Lord, then like Haridas Thakur, at the moment of death, you'll see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or you'll see Krishna, just like Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he was seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but the Lord also uh, manifested his form as Sadbuj to him, which is uh, Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Rama, all in one. <laughs> so, uh, and, and then uh, Swami Bhagavan Bhattacharya fainted in ecstasy. Uh, you can go to uh, Swami Bhagavan's house, it's in, uh, uh, it's in Jagannath Puri, and you can sit or stand right there where that took place. Right? And that's why Jagannath Puri is a very special place because you see the actual uh, room in which Lord Chaitanya spent a long, well, at least 12 years uh, or more of his, uh, of his pastimes. And you see his original beads, you see his original chapels, you see uh, so many original things that he actually touched and used. And you can also see Haridas Thakur's Samadhi and you can see uh, the, uh, the, the deity that he disappeared into and you can see so many things in Jagannath Puri. It's a very, very holy place. And of course you can see Sarvabhama Bhattacharya's house where the Lord revealed his Sadbuja form. So there's a lot of mysticism but all that mysticism is revealed by the mystic meditation of chanting Hare Krishna. And so it's an easy method. Why? Because everything is so difficult in Kali Yuga, Krishna is given an easy method. Kali Yudosa Nidei Rajan Astihi Eka Mahatguna Kirtanad Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Sijayate. 
So, so many bad things, but there's one great thing in Kali Yuga. Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, you can easily attain liberation from the cycle of birth and death. However, if we don't do that, and we're meditating on politics, and we're meditating on the stock market, and we're meditating on baseball, basketball, football, soccer, whatever, cricket, and you're meditating on uh, so many things, then what happens? Uh, you end up with this particular symptom of Kali Yuga in which no family is now blessed to live together. That's unfortunate. No family is blessed to live together. To earn a livelihood, the father lives at a place far away from the son or the wife lives far away from the husband and so on. There are sufferings from material diseases, separation from those near and dear, and anxieties for maintaining the status quo. These are but some important factors which make the people of this age always unhappy. So, should we be unhappy? No, the nature of the soul is anandamaya biasad. But when we do things that we shouldn't be doing and not do those things that we should be doing, then we become unhappy. It's very simple. It's not complicated. So if you're unhappy, you're doing something that you should not be doing. Right. And if you can't figure out what that something is, you can ask a, a more advanced devotee to help you figure it out. Just like once I had a good friend of mine who was a guru and uh, an advanced devotee in Krishna consciousness, and he had a complete nervous breakdown. And when he had that nervous breakdown, nobody wanted to have anything to do with him in the movement, not even his wife. And, but I knew him, and uh, he called me up in his, in his lowest point. He was even considering suicide. And he said, look, everyone has rejected me. Can you help me? I said, yeah. I'll help you. And uh, he came and stayed with me, and uh, he stayed for about a year. And during that time, he and I had many talks, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what is it that put him into the stage of extreme distress and having a nervous breakdown? And little by little, talking to him, talking to him, uh, it's a long story, I'm not going to say everything, but uh, at one point I realized that his immediate problem that really was distressing him and was stopping him from healing himself was uh, that he had a property in Vrindavan and he was trying to sell it to get the money to give his wife and his kids and, and uh, so, and, and uh, the, that property was purchased by uh, his disciples who had gone on Sankirtan, or you call it sometimes Scam Kirtan, for, uh, <laughs> for uh, years to buy that property. So they also wanted to have some of the money. I mean, you know, when everything breaks down, people go all become greedy again, you know. Uh, it goes from a, a, a high level of... Uh, pure uh, altruism and goodness down to the lowest level of greed and envy. So when he told me, when he finally revealed to me that was, that was really bothering him and he couldn't even concentrate on getting himself better, I said, well, I got an easy solution for you. He said, what's that? I said, give the property to the temple. Now see, the problem why he was so much in anxiety is because he had partnered with an Indian who was ripping him off, who was going to sell it and keep all the money. And at first he didn't think that would happen, but then little by little he realized that that was gonna happen, and it was on the verge of happening. So I told him, look, uh, the way things work in India is very simple. Whoever has the biggest gang wins, right? <laughs> so it's not a more question of the law in India, it's a question of who has the biggest gang. So I said, in Vrindavan, Iskana's got a pretty big gang. You know? 
So if you don't donate to donate it to ISKCON, then they'll fight that person is trying to rip you off, and his friends, the gundas, and you're free. So he hesitated a long time. He didn't want to give it up. But finally, I convinced him. And it just so happened that Gopal Krishna happened to be in, in Seattle <laughs> at that time. And I forced him to go and see Gopal Krishna and offer it to him. And to make the long story short, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he got that off his mind. And his wife got, and we had to negotiate all these things. I helped them negotiate it with Gopal Krishna Maharaj. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj agreed to give some of the, uh, some money to his wife, and this and that. And the whole thing got cleared up, and he got better, and he's now very happily engaged in devotional service. Yeah. Hari Bol. Yeah. Yeah. But he went from top to bottom and finally came back to the middle. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you go too high, you can fall down, right? It's better to stay, you know, on a, on a more humble level and not get uh, intoxicated by uh, adoration and money and all that stuff and fame because it's very dangerous. Okay, so simply chanting Hare Krishna, it doesn't matter you're a guru or you're a, a neophyte devotee, if you get serious about chanting Hare Krishna, you can easily attain liberation in this age of Kali. That should be our message today. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? This is 8th chapter, verse number 8. Just remember 88. 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to explain the whole story. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, yeah, I heard some of it, you know. It's very horrible. And I was in Vendor, but I was doing 